Something to keep in mind with cardiac pocus, it can be really challenging. It can take a lot of time to master it, and it's totally okay if you're not able to visualize all the windows that you want for any given patient. Some patients, for whatever reason, they just don't have that window. That being said, there are a couple of troubleshooting tips we can give you for each of the views. And let's just say we have our normal view here. I'm going to adjust my depth. And let's say for whatever reason you're having a hard time getting this peristernal long image. One thing you can do is have the patient turn onto their left side, which brings the heart a little bit more anterior to the chest. It may be easier to visualize. So go ahead and turn onto your left side, raising your arm up. And by doing this, you're able to see a little bit better view of our left atrium, our left ventricle, and your outflow tract. Keep in mind you may not be able to see the entire LV apex in this particular view, especially if you have them turned, but this is one particular trick. I'll go ahead and have you turn back. Another common thing that can happen is if you have a patient who has a lot of air or you're just seeing a lot of A-lines in the lung, you can have the patient exhale fully, which deflates the lungs and may bring the heart into an easier view. If you do this, just be sure to hold your breath alongside the patient's. Go ahead and exhale. Okay, go ahead and inhale again. And by doing that, that allows you to visualize the heart a little bit easier. Another common um, error that I see or something that you may encounter is you may have difficulty visualizing the aortic valve. Go ahead and just breathe normally. If you're having difficulty visualizing the aortic valve, that might be an issue of probe placement. Two things you can do is you can point the probe more towards the patient's head, or in other words, anteriorly. Another thing you can do is play around with rotation. So if here we don't really see the aortic valve that well, you can actually rotate the probe clockwise, which brings it into a slightly better view. So that's for a parasternal long. Thinking about the images for a parasternal short and troubleshooting it, again, we are now having the dot point towards the patient's left shoulder. With the parasternal short, a couple of things can happen. First of all, just be sure that you're not over the sternum. As you're rotating it, there's a tendency to actually move the probe. So as we see here, they're seeing a lot of black. That just means we're over the sternum. I can feel the sternum at the same time. And so what I'm doing is just sliding my probe slightly over laterally, and I'm able to see. The peristernal short, another key aspect of it, is it really depends on your probe's angle on what you're going to see. Sometimes you get these hybrid views where you see a little bit of the mitral valve, a little bit of the left ventricular cavity. To adjust for that, just remember that this ultrasound probe is almost like a flashlight and try to imagine what you're pointing it at. If I want to see more of the left ventricular apex, I just need to orient my probe more posteriorly or more towards the heart's apex. But instead of going more vertically, more towards the heart's apex. Allow me to visualize a little bit better. Thinking about the apical four chamber, this can be a little uh, challenging of a view, and so a couple of troubleshooting tips. In addition to having the patient turn onto her left side, which to be honest with you is something you're going to have to commonly do, is you're going to have to think a little bit about your depth, so you always want to adjust your depth to an appropriate level. And another thing is that patients often, uh, when we're scanning, we often acquire an apical five chamber view. When we're thinking about an apical five-chamber view, that means we are pointing our probe more towards the patient's head or more anteriorly, and that may give you a foreshortened view of the heart. So just be sure if you are scanning a patient in an apical sense, try to make it so your probe is as perpendicular as possible to the patient's chest wall. Another error that I sometimes see with the apical uh, four-chamber is you get what's called a foreshortened view. What a foreshortened view means is you can see the left ventricular cavity, but you really can't see the atria that well. This is very common in individuals um, where you're struggling to find the view. To fix this, all you have to do is just take this probe and slide it down one or two rib spaces to bring that atria into view. You generally want a more oval appearance to the heart in the apical four-chamber view. Finally, when we're thinking about troubleshooting the subcostal view, the subcostal uh, area might be overmarked with a lot of bowel gas. And in some patients who have recently eaten, that may make it a very challenging view. To fix for this, you can have the patient take a deep breath in, which brings the heart a little bit closer to the abdominal cavity and easier to visualize. Go ahead and exhale. Another common error that I see are individuals who point the probe almost perpendicular to the chest. 
When you do this, you can imagine the heart is up here on the left side. You're not able to visualize it that well if it's pointed down like this. So all you have to do is take this overhand grip, like a remote control, and drop your probe so it's almost parallel to the patient's body. And that can bring the subcostal into a better view.